another book review. Today we are going to be reviewing Yes Please by Amy Poehler. It is a really big book and I mentioned in the last book review video that I would be doing this. So this is another quick read. I'm going to keep it pretty simple today because I'm going to say this. I was not the biggest fan of this book and I kind of feel like I'm in the min minority with that because I feel like the reason I got this book is because it was so hyped up and so highly requested and it was a big book so I was really dedicating time and attention to it but it was exactly what I was hoping the book would not be. If you are a big fan of Amy Poehler, Saturday Night Live or comedy then this is a book for you. But the book really is more storytelling and less kind of inspiration, motivational, um, I don't know, just, I was assuming she was going to take kind of stories and turn it into a lesson in each chapter, but it really was just about different parts of her life, like when she fell in love with comedy stand-up in New York, when she fell in, in love with comedy stand-up in Chicago, and there wasn't a whole lot of... I guess inspirational reading out of it. If you are not somebody who watches SNL, then this book is going to be like womp 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 to you because there is a ton of talk, which makes sense because it was practically her whole life. Um, you're not going to understand who the characters are. If you don't watch shows like Park and Recreation, then you're going to feel kind of lost because it's way out of your genre. So it wasn't my favorite book. However, there are two points that she talked on in this book that I think alone are worth mentioning and if for anything that would be why I recommend this book. The first point is kind of about, it's a concept about how we are, you know, looking for a way to travel time and it's, it's just this thing that as humans if we could travel time we would kind of have everything figured out in life but that we actually can travel time and we have created time traveling and the whole point of that is that Basically, it's living in the moment. It's really sitting down, looking at what you're looking at, hearing what you're hearing, and living each moment, paying full attention to it, giving it all of your focus. So you go to the park with your children. You kind of need to take it in, sit back, watch every little detail, watch the grin on your child's face, listen to the giggles coming out of the body, watch them as they fall down and skin their knee, because the more focus you put on something, then the easier it is to go back in time and relive that moment or recreate that moment. And it really, it, it just kind of touched home for me because we really do live, life is a series of moments, but we don't tend to put enough time into those moments. We just go through the motions every single day. We do the things that we're used to doing to routine. You know, when we tuck the kids in bed, we quickly tuck them in and go about doing our thing instead of really living and embracing that moment. And I have started to take that into my own life kind of to the extreme. Like I said, if I go to the park with my children, I really, I don't look at my phone. I sometimes don't even have um, communication with another adult. I just sit there and I watch and I listen. I really live in that moment because I want to be able to relive that moment. The second key point, I think the most important thing she touched on in this book is the good for her, not for me concept. And this just kind of goes on about how as women, as people in general, but women especially, we spend so much of our time wishing we were some way or wishing we were more like this person or wondering how are they the perfect mom, the perfect wife, the perfect artist, the perfect cook. And it kind of comes down to good for her, not for me. All of our priorities are totally different. What I put in priority in my life, you are not necessarily going to put as priority in your life. So for example, you might be that mother that is so crafty and always has the coolest things for your kids and the best, most personalized gifts. Good for you, not for me. In my life, that is just not a priority. I am just trying to figure out how to get dinner on the table for my kids by the end of the night. So if you can do that, more power to you and I love that and I respect you as a mother, as a woman, as a person, but it's just not for me and that's okay. I think that point is the biggest takeaway that people should take from this book. Good for her, not for me. We all do things differently. We all have things we excel at, things that we can grow on. So good for her, not for me. So that's basically it. Um, like I said, if you want to read a book that kind of just tell, takes you on a story of Amy Poehler's life, then this is the book for you. If you're looking for something that's more motivational, personal development, um, inspirational, 
maybe not the book for you. The book that I will be reading in our book club, which I will post the link down below, we have a Facebook group on Facebook, obviously, that we do a virtual book club. So basically we read books, we discuss it, we kind of talk about what we're reading, what we like about it, what we don't. And the book we are reading for the next, I'll get this book done in a week, but for the next few weeks is Joel Osteen's You Can, You Will. This is definitely more of like a faith-based book, so if that is not up your aisle, um, then maybe opt out of it. But this is the book that we are reading this go around, and I will be making a video on it soon. I hope you guys are enjoying these book reviews, and I will talk to you later. Bye!